we step out on the tarmac and this helicopter sitting there and this is the beginning of the week-long adventure. We're gonna take this helicopter from Guatemala City out to the coast of this top of to Pacific Fins. Pacific Fins is the top-notch fishing destination. We are the top fishery within the region and you will enjoy being able to catch so many shellfish every day. Around every turn is something special on trips like this. This is my third trip to Guatemala. I came, uh, filmed an episode the prior season, and then I came back for the Guatemala Billfish Invitational, where we caught a ton of sailfish on both trips. So I know what to expect. Pacific sailfish are a different monster in themselves, and Heather has no idea what's in store. It's a pretty unique fishery in Guatemala. Um, they've done a lot of research, a lot of sailfish tagging to understand the, the, the patterns of these fish and what they, what they do, how they move, but really what dictates where they're going to be is where the blue water is. So some days the water is 10 miles out and some days the blue water is 50 miles out. So really it just depends on the currents and where the, that blue water is because that area is what holds the bait. So. You know, most days start out by, you know, where were the fish the day prior? That's a general area to start. And what these guys really do well is communicate with one another. When one boat finds fish, they communicate with the other boats and they realize that, you know, these areas are, are pockets of concentrations of fish. So a lot of times you'll be starting out on your own in the morning, you find them, he radios, and then a lot of boats congregate together to get in on the action. A little bit bigger than the ones at home. <laughs> bigger than those Atlantics. Yeah, so, I mean, we live in Jensen Beach and Stewart, so, you know, sail fishing, we do it all the time here. Um, so, in my mind, it was catching another sailfish, which was completely wrong. And I got my butt handed to me by my first Pacific sailfish my first Pez Vela. It, it definitely broke me for sure. I mean, I, I told George at one point I thought I was gonna drop the rod in the water. That's just slow and steady. Go, Heather. He's taking line, babe. You gotta make him jump, babe. George is really good at yelling directions and then telling you to do the exact opposite of what he just told you to do. When I, I'm telling him I'm still doing the first thing you told me to do and now you're telling me to do something else. God, that is a big one, honey. I know uh, it about killed you. <laughs> I'm gonna let it go. Uh, I'll enjoy that massage later, honey. She's caught Atlantic sailfish, but never Pacific sailfish. And they're two different monsters, totally. Practically twice the size, super aggressive. The Pacific sailfish is something that will put a definite hurting on you. Stops along the way, the, the guide said we have to stop at this little place. You know, they, you know, they make local artisans making local crafts. But in the back is a guy hand carving these beautiful sculptures. These these masks that he makes and these figurines that he makes are all created by hand. What kind of wood is he using here? ¿Qué, qué clase de madera estás utilizando? Madera de, de chico zapote. It's that chewing gum wood. So. He also made a, a mask uh, of the, um, the sun god that the Mayans call it Kenich Ahau. It was the maximum god of them. How long, is it, how long does it take to create, to do? ¿Cuánto tiempo te llevas para hacer esto? Llevamos seis días. ¿En cuántos días crees tenerlo finalizado? Three days more. Uh -huh. So, he has uh, spent six days, but he's gonna finish three, in three more days. The man, the myth. 
Ozzy Delgado is, runs uh, the marketing sales side of Pacific Fins. I met him in the industry years ago, became friends with him before he even had this job. And once he got this job, you know, it opened up the opportunity to come down here and to be a part of this. And I'm so fortunate to meet people like Ozzy and, and to have these opportunities. Yeah, Ozzy has that can-do attitude. It's just like everybody at Pacific Fins. It's like, whatever you want, we'll do. Yeah, what, that? Well, we'll do that. Yeah, you go there? Uh, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. How are we going to do that, Ozzy? Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll do it. Do we need permits for that? Yeah, we'll get that. Don't worry about that. Right on bank! He's there. Let him eat. Let that eat. I'll tell you what. Fishing with George has always been an amazing time. I just love the way he is and how passionate he is anywhere he goes. Um, glad that I get to share these things with him. For him, it means a lot because being in Florida based, he doesn't travel as much. Um, but he's such a great guy. Again, I would just go to the end of the world with this guy. I knew it was going to happen. It's a matter of time. We've uh, we bumped into a nice slick area. And sure enough, look what happened. Did a couple other people start catching them right here? Yep. According to studies done for the last 10 years by the University of Miami's uh, Marine Science uh, Research Area, Guatemala is the top destination for sailfish within the region. There is truly no comparison with the rest of the countries because we can actually average five to 10 times more sailfish bites per boat per day than any other destination. And that is, again, a combination of God's given gift to us, plus the fact that we're working strongly in conserving the species. It's important to mention that Guatemala was the first country to enact into law the conservation of the sailfish. And within the last five, six years, we've been working hand in hand with the government as a task force between governmental institutions and the private sector to truly work the fishery, make it sustainable, both for sport fishing as well as for uh, artisan fishermen that play along on the same field that we are playing. Thank you. All right. Hi, right, buddy. Thank you, brother. Let's get another one. You see the abundance of life on the surface. Birds flying, flying fish, sea turtles. If you were to come across something floating in the water, the amount of life around that floatsam is breathtaking in itself. And when you jump in the water, it's a totally different view. When you come into a pot of dolphin and you stop and you really take these creatures in and, and, and realize how special they are, you jump in the water with them and realize how big they are, how fast they are, how maneuverable they are. They're jumping out of the water, they're playful, they're just as interested in you as you are in them. That's, you know, that's kind of one of those, one of those moments you're like, wow, you know, they're, this is, this is neat. This is something cool to do. And you can, you can do that here. They have so many different opportunities to do that. Um, we had a pod come up to the boat. One of the camera guys jumped in and it was fun just to watch from up on the boat, watch those porpoises interact with the cameraman. It's more than just fishing. To me, it's always been more than just the fishing. It's more than just reeling in a fish. It, it, if you're the type of person that can appreciate the nature around you and the opportunities and the experiences that every bit of it, you, you take so much more from a trip like this. You just slow down and learn to appreciate every different aspect of what you're experiencing. Well, for the last uh, couple years, Guatemala overall has grown within its sport fishing uh, tourism industry. That has opened jobs for many of our community kids that have started as wash boys, have moved to mates, and right now we have a perfect example of us promoting a mate to a captain for one of our new boats that we're showcasing at Pacific Fins. 
This is how the economy thrives by having a sport fishing industry that can cater to everyone that started out as a artisan fisherman and wants to grow and has a talent to grow within the different segments of the industry. Mahi, we got lunch. Nice dolphin too. What was that, like one minute? I don't think that even that. <laughs> the beauty about sport fishing as an industry is one, it is sustainable, and secondly, it actually brings in high-end tourism that yield a good income for our population. What we do as a sport fishing destination is make sure that everyone that comes to fish both Pacific fins as well as the rest of Guatemala, the Pacific Ocean of Guatemala, understand that what they're providing us with is hard-earned uh, tourist cash that goes back to the community as it needs to go. We got lunch. Besides our fishery and the phenomenal water we have, loaded with so many fish, we got so much to offer. Guatemala is the place if you wanna bring your kids, your wives, or just have a leisure day, do excursions. I mean, there's just so many things. The town of Antigua, the culture. I mean, everything's so vivid. Just today, I'm, you know, we're witnessing here in Tikal what it actually offers. I mean, as you can hear in the background, you got parrots flying over us, you got, you know, wild turkeys here. And there's toucans. And there's these little creatures that look like raccoons with long tails that are running across the ground. And, and so much different things that you, you've only seen in books. You, you, didn't, you almost didn't even know they existed. There's so much. And I always say that to everybody, people think it's just the fishing, but no, again, the hidden gem of Central America. Never been to anything like this with such history in the past. Things here date back to 300 BC. So we're talking about over 2,000 years ago, um, some of these structures were here. It almost sounds fake but it's not, it's these howler monkeys. And they're setting the scene as you walk through this, this rainforest and it's incredible. But then in a clearing is this massive, beautiful structure. In the middle of a rainforest is just giant limestone structure that was created nearly 2000 years ago.
Fortify is a premium ocean lifestyle brand that creates footwear that combines durability for those that love the water and the island lifestyle. Olakas are designed to follow nature and what they call the wet sand principle. From the toe to the arch to the heel. I stand all day in the boat and there's nothing more comfortable on my feet than a pair of Olakais. It's not only the comfort that separates Olakai, it's their quality. Handcrafted with thoughtful design, details honoring island culture, durable, high character materials, and superior fit and support. The Hawaiian translation of Olakai is comfortable ocean, and the spirit of the brand is embraced in both of these words. If you're looking for a high quality premium brand footwear, head to a local retailer and check out Olakai. Sail. Finally! Finally! We had a little cold spell there for a while. <clears throat> the weather's kind of calmed down. Yeah. It's typical for this area to do this. Only when you got big fronts out of the state to come down. This is way over here. Big belly in the line. Fish. Woo! Like I always say, it never gets old to look God. at that. A couple shots of blue marlin today, nice mahi. And these sailfish are big. Come on, it's the same size as the ones yeah. in Stewart, right? Much bigger. <laughs> We got a purple color, beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted when I put Unfathom together. It was the journey of discovery, of traveling to new places, new destinations, getting out of my comfort zone, exploring new cultures and traditions, trying new foods, new drinks, meeting new people. And it's exactly what took place on this trip to Guatemala. Ozzy, Niels, they provided an experience that I'll never forget. The fishing, the travels to Antigua, and to see Tikal and the Mayan ruins. Their memories are gonna last a lifetime. Their stories that I'll share with my kids and my grandkids. And it's one of those experiences and one of those places that everybody has to experience once. They smoke before to do the ceremony to, for protection and in order to attract, to bring up the, the blessings, oh. right? Mm -hmm. According to the Maya mythology, uh, in this sap, if we ask for, for, for uh, healthy or for another need that we have, it attracted and recorded, right? Okay. The shaman is a religious figure in the, in the Mayan culture that not only has healing properties, um, almost like a medicine man, but also is used to help, help provide protection, to help provide guidance and cleanse, cleanseness and help with meditation and centering of oneself. The priest or the Mayan shaman um, immediately considered our group as a whole. I mean, he had all the cameramen, you know, involved in the ceremony, myself, Ozzy. Uh, without the priest knowing us as individuals, he spoke to us each and was able to tell us things about our lives and personalities that he had no way of knowing. And he did this with each one of us individually. The things that he said, I mean, it's funny, I have Heather there and she's looking, I'm like, oh my God, this guy is exactly right. He said things about me and then things about her that were so true and things about our lives that were so true and you're just looking at them like wow how could this be um, I'm not a very religious person and I think I respected this so much too because it, it 
To me, it centers around earth and it centers around the water and the trees and the environment. And I can really relate to that. I felt something. I don't, again, I'm not a very religious person, but I felt at one with, with nature. I felt at one with the moment and one with myself, like at peace and just a harmony with everything. It's hard to explain because I'm not, I'm not that person, but it was a very good feeling. It was a very calming feeling, a very centering feeling. Toucans up in a tree, flying over your head. I thought I only thought they existed on the on the box of a Fruit Loops. I have see-through floor. I have a see-through floor.